one of aviation's biggest events of the year. It was the, the major attraction. A lot of people came here to see it. Maybe fewer people will come on the public days this weekend to not see it. And obviously, the competing military aircraft will be secretly quite pleased that the predictions that it couldn't actually show have been proven right. Britain's Foreign Borough Air Show, where the industry's top players display for sale the latest in aviation innovation. This is a commitment for the future. We've got to be planning, not just for next year, but we've got to be planning 10, 15, 20 years in the future. Despite a current skeptical aerospace industry, one that fears trade tensions from Brexit. $20 billion in deals racked up just on the opening day, proving that innovation is back on track. Not only is there huge growth potential, but many of the developments taking place have the potential to transform the way we fly. In attendance was the Airbus A380 aircraft as it flew in formation with Britain's Red Arrows. There was the Boeing 787 and the F-35 Lightning Stealth Fighters as the centerpiece to this year's show. And it's not just planes, but UAVs as well, demonstrated by the Israeli defense firm Elbit Systems. Our customers are governments, and they use the UAVs both for uh, what you call military use, but also for homeland securities. Major deals have been made already among players such as General Electric and with Qatar Airways. So many jobs and prosperity, but most importantly, making sure the Royal Air Force has the right capability is the reason why we're making this investment in Tempe today. Politics change. Crises arise and resolve. But if this air show and its billion dollars in deals indicate anything, the striving for cutting edge technology and maintaining military might remains on track and focused. And from Farnborough, I'm joined by Aaron Mehta, senior Pentagon correspondent for Defense News. So, Aaron, what type of high-level delegations are over there, and what's the buzz over President Trump's seemingly solidarity with Putin just days after he dissed Theresa May and other NATO allies? Yeah, it's been very interesting to be here this week, given all that's going on with the geopolitics. Uh, certainly for a British air show, the, uh, the way that Theresa May and the Queen, frankly, were treated by President Trump uh, has caused a little bit of a buzz here. Um, NATO as well, obviously, is a big issue. Of course, the first day of the summit coincided with, what, uh, with, with the meeting with President Putin, or Mr. Putin and Mr. Trump. Uh, the very interesting thing here is, you know, everyone's cautious about spending, but you hear about NATO spending, certainly that's Mr. Trump's message, is to increase NATO spending. The reality is, for the defense industry, that's welcome news, both domestically and abroad. So is there wide expectation for trade wars? Oh, sorry, yeah. So obviously there, there's concerns about uh, the trade situation, the tariff situation. One of the big things we've heard a lot about early on from uh, the CEO of Boeing and other major American executives, some of whom have been very supportive of Mr. Trump, including Dennis Mueller, the Boeing CEO, is concern about the supply chain. You know, over the last two decades, a lot of American aerospace companies have specifically sought out European, Canadian, Asian uh, places to build out their supply chain, particularly on the commercial side. Now, all of a sudden, with the tariffs, there's concern that that's going to be imperiled, that it will raise costs, potentially it could hurt sales as well. You know, if you talk to a company like Boeing or other commercial vendors, China is a big buyer of this stuff, not in the military side, obviously, but everyone's budgets are intertwined. If there's a trade war that breaks out with China, all of a sudden China decides we're not buying European or American airspace, helicopters, anything like that, that's going to have a big economic impact. Now tell us about Tempest, this new ambitious British fighter project that was unveiled over there. And does it have anything to do with Britain's upcoming exit from the EU? It's absolutely connected to Brexit. Uh, so a couple of months ago, the French and Germans came together and announced that they are going to be working on a new next generation fighter aircraft. Uh, this is kind of a, not a lot of details have come out, but it's very clearly a sign of economic solidarity among the remaining EU countries. They said, Britain is welcome to join at some point, maybe if they're good. Uh, Britain has essentially responded by saying, you know what? As with Brexit, we can do this on our own. In Europe, economic security is tied directly into the industrial base of the military. So this is Britain trying to strike out and say, you know, we don't need a French and German partnership as we have uh, in the past. Now we're going to do things on our own. 
The big question, of course, is whether they actually can pull it off. Uh, they have a surprised a lot of people by having a full-scale mock-up of what they're calling the Tempest. Kind of looks like somebody took an F-35, stretched the neck, and then shaved all the bumps off it. It's an early concept design. We don't know what it'll actually look like, but notably, it does have Leonardo, the Italian company, as a partner. Italy's another country whose government right now is very, very cautious about the EU. And finally, Aaron, what's the sense you're getting of Israel standing on the global export market? Have uh, nearly routine surgical strikes in Syria, along with the way that it's handling uh, all the various rocket and mortar attacks coming from Gaza, increased interest? I think certainly Israel is well represented, as they always are at these air shows. Uh, you know, I, I can't say that they've increased interest because I think everyone's always interested in Israeli products. The reality is uh, they're well respected around the world for the capabilities they provided. Uh, both throughout the past and you know in operations with allies uh, people always are looking at these things now there's always some concern about uh, politics certainly some governments have raised concerns about Israel's actions uh, in the past and in the last few months uh, I haven't seen any signs here that that is impacting potential sales or impacting the relationship that these companies have with their other counterparts we'll have to wait and see